Do you ever wish to purchase your own houses and completely recreate them in your own style? If so, then this is the game for you. This is Hotel Renovator, a game where you take ownership of an old rundown hotel and turn it into something of your own, using nothing but some tools and your creativity. So if you're as ready like I am, then come along as we renovate each and every room in different styles, uncover secret lore behind the hotel, and meet crazy and interesting people that stay to visit. My name is Newbie, and this is 100 Days of Hotel Renovator. Our hotel was looking a little run down after not being in use for such a long time, so we had to start renovations as soon as possible. On day one, we had a request from a man named Vlad, who definitely was not a vampire, and he asked for a room in our lovely establishment. I immediately agreed and renovations began for room 103. There was a lot of stuff inside the room that we had to clear out, so we took our crowbar and began work destroying the contents before starting the new, clean setup. For 103, I went for a gothic style vibe, using shades of red and black for the furniture and walls, whilst incorporating candles to light up the dim room. Since this was my first time, it took a little while to get the hang of things, but we eventually finished the room after adding my own personal touches, like some plants and my new signature egg sticker on the wall. The room got booked out, but Vlad wasn't too happy with it, and he asked if he could stay in the coffin which was located in the basement. Bit of a weird request from a weird man, but I accepted and booked out the room for a band at $200 a day. The band staying with us One asked so. to film a well, video in our hotel lobby test. and I said our yes, so I set up some recording equipment and let them go at it. Mid video, the singer decided to kick a piece of dynamite up to the sky and it blew up the entire lobby, which made it much less work for me so I say thank you. Now without a choice. I decided to begin work on the lobby. From days 2 to 3 I kept working on the lobby. I tried to think about what looks nice together and decided on a small grey and white flooring with pure white walls, whilst the furniture follows this trend with white stained couches and chairs and darkened wood tables and coffee tables. I thought the mixture of light and dark would look quite well, but I'm still torn on whether or not to keep the floor but for now, I'm going to keep it the same. Once I had finished the lobby, I got a request from a wedding party for a bulk load of rooms to be booked out. So from days 4 to 11, we began work on room 107, which was for the bachelorettes. I decided to go for a nice and bright theme with pink and lavender coloured walls with a patterned grey wooden floor. The party themselves had some requests also, so we had to put in some party balloons, neon art decorations on the walls, and a mini fridge. I added a small feature wall made up of large wooden panels for the bed, and for the bathroom I decided on using large white tile squares for the floor, and smaller grey square tiles for the walls. I wanted to keep the colour theme going by adding different coloured furniture, and it seemed to fit perfectly. I was putting in the last few touches on the room when I heard a noise outside. I checked and saw that a chicken was in the corridor and he challenged me to a game of dice, so I gladly took him up on the duel and ended up winning, granting me $2000. I got back to room 107 and put in the last few balloons down, then placed the mini fridge and finally booked out the room for $200 a day. Day 13 began by running through the rooms and giving them a quick sweep to keep our cleanliness level at 10 for each room. Then I received a notification saying that we had new equipment ready for purchase. I made my way down to the lobby and bought the vacuum cleaner and hammer. I pulled out the hammer whilst making my way back upstairs and without knowing what it did, I swung it around and watched that the whole lobby floor got ripped up. Big mistake, but a blessing in disguise as I could now change the lobby floor like I had been wanting to, so I took my chance. The wedding party was going to be inside the restaurant, so my next step was to renovate the whole place and this is what I began to do. I pulled out my hammer and began swinging at every wall and piece of trash I could see. I was still demolishing on day 14, and when the time came, I used my newly acquired vacuum and cleaned up the mess I had caused all over the restaurant. 
The next few days were spent renovating this place. For this project, I thought that a mix of wood and brick would work well together. So I used a patterned light and dark wood panel flooring with a grey brick style for the walls. I decided to match the furniture as well, so I tried to match the tables and coffee tables to the flooring colour and made the chairs a solid white colour to complement the brick. I got back to work and stayed busy until a small break and found a picture of grandpa, which my co-worker loved to see. I was close to finishing my new project, throwing in some plants and wall lamps to add some colour and light to the place, then got a notification saying that room 101 had some things that needed repairs. So I quickly made my way up and watched that darn chicken run out of the room after destroying a piece of furniture. I quickly fixed it up and cleaned the room, picking up my tips during the clean, then went back downstairs and tried to finish before the new day rolled on. On day 18, I placed down the last two mirrors and finished the restaurant. I placed in a couple of balloons for the party, then left the guests to enjoy it for themselves. Yumiko notified me that we had some noisy neighbours upstairs, so I took the elevator and went to the door. I knocked once and nothing happened, so I aggressively slammed on the door countless times until the noise dropped to silence and the door swung open. There was no one there. Strange, but oh well. The next step to bringing this hotel back up to its prime was renovating the floor one corridor so people don't have to walk through that complete mess just to get to their rooms. So I took my hammer and began the demolition work. From days 19 to 20, I kept working on the corridor so that it would have a much more homey vibe to our customers, who I believe would appreciate not walking through trash. Throughout construction of the corridor, Yumiko sent us a notification about a customer who was dealing with some leaky pipe issues, so I went over to room 103 and checked. The pipe was definitely leaking and the room was a complete mess, so I took the elevator down and turned off the water valve. As I was making my way back upstairs, I saw the option to upgrade the bar in the restaurant, which I did straight away and it looked so much better. Distraction aside, I made my way back to room 103 and cleaned up the mess before continuing my work on the corridor, hoping to get it finished very soon. I spent the beginning of day 21 putting in the last few additions into the corridor before it was finally done. At this point, the hotel was looking so much nicer, but there was still a lot we needed to do. Yumiko sent me a notification saying that the chicken was wreaking havoc once again and had broken some furniture in room 101. So we took a quick look and replaced the furniture, gave the room a little clean and picked up a golden egg that he had left behind. Our next project was room 102 and I had a great idea of what I wanted to do with this one. So without more delay, I began demolition work of the new room, getting it ready for renovation. The next few days were spent on focusing on renovating room 102 to its fullest. For this room, I decided to try a nice black lower border with a complementary grey on top for the walls, then match the style with a slightly darkened square grey carpet for the flooring. The person booking the room also requested for lots of candles and plenty of plants, which made them my new favourite customer. The rain outside began to pick up and the lobby started to get extremely dirty, so I took the elevator down and used my vacuum to fix up the mess before the customers saw. Whilst cleaning up, I checked our hotel booking app and saw that room 107 was beginning to become dirty, so I went back upstairs and cleaned it up, collecting my tips in the process, then got back to work where I began deciding on furniture for the room. I wanted to match the darker style of the walls, and I thought that a dark tone of wood would fit perfectly for the large pieces, then make the smaller pieces, like chairs, a standout brighter wood colour. I did a quick test to see if it worked well, and it definitely did. The power shut down in the early hours of day 27, so I went downstairs to quickly fix the issue. Whilst down there, I put a TV in the restaurant to ensure our guests don't get bored too easily, then made my way back up to put the last few pieces into room 102 before managing to buck it out for another $200 per day. It turns out that a superhero was booking out one of my rooms as a safe place to hide out. 
he requested for another TV in his room as well as three teddy bears for some reason. So on day 28, we put in the new items for our superhero friend and hopefully he keeps our hotel safe. Whilst he was doing his hero business, I took on another project of renovating room 104. I took out my hammer and began breaking everything in sight until I got a notification from Yumiko that the chicken had struck again and I had to replace another piece of furniture inside of room 102. So I quickly went over and fixed it up, then cleaned the room just in case before getting back to my demolition work. The next couple of days were spent speeding through this room. I wanted to try a different kind of style to my prior renovations and settled on a lighter aesthetic with shades of pink and red. I thought a darker brick tone would be a perfect fit for a feature wall, so I made it to see if it worked well and it looked perfect. I could hear the screeches of a man in panic downstairs whilst I was working, so I took my break and went to see what was happening, but it was just a man who had lost his wallet. I agreed to help look for it and stared at every inch of the lobby to try and see it. As I was doing so, I saw a mass amount of superheroes in the corner of my eye and checked out what was going on. The same hero kept walking into a hotel and going straight to the restaurant and I have no idea why. I managed to finally find the man's wallet and upon grabbing hold of it, I was prompted with two options, return it or keep it. I wasn't ready for a felony so I returned it to the man and he was thankful enough to gift me $300 so it was definitely worth it. I was about to make my way back until I saw the restaurant even fuller than before as the superheroes kept coming in one by one. I don't know if it's a reunion of past generations or not but I'm going to leave them be for now. I made my way back upstairs and whilst taking the elevator Yumiko let me know that the chicken had broken even more furniture. So I took a stroll to room 102, fixed up the furniture, gave the place a little clean and booked it out for 880 per night. I delayed another project a bit longer and checked our hotel app and saw that room 103 could use a clean. So I quickly vacuumed up the dirt and dropped a visit to room 106 to begin work on demolition. Before starting renovation work for that room however, I got a message from the superhero in room 101 saying that he was getting scared of a ghost haunting his room. I went to check it out and put a ghost strap down, waiting for the ghost to reveal himself, then pulled out the vacuum and captured him once and for all. The ghost trap absorbed him and wow, I sold it for $10,000. Equipped with our new cash flow, I went back to room 106 and began renovations. For this room, I wanted a light and dark theme with another feature wall for the bed to rest against. I made the feature wall a nice deep green colour that spanned over two walls, then used a slightly off-white colour for the rest of the wall. Then to add more of a dark aesthetic, I made the floor a nice dark and grey vinyl wood pattern that looked extremely nice. During construction, Yumiko let me know that a pipe had burst in room 102. So I took my break and went to the lobby so I could turn the water valve off. I then went back to the floor one and cleaned up the mess and water leak with the vacuum before getting back to work. I did a mix and match of furniture, making the objects nearer to the feature wall a darker wood type, whilst the further items like chairs and dining table more of a brighter wood type. I spent half of day 36 putting in the last few pieces for the room including my beloved plants by the boatload and my signature egg sticker because why not then booked out the room for another $200 per day our income was looking extremely well so far i made my way to the lobby to say hi to yumiko and saw that the front desk was ready for an expensive upgrade so i paid for it and changed it to the one that i thought suited the lobby the best this new desk made it so we have a higher chance for our customers to leave good tips before leaving, which is always a big plus. Classic I somehow forgot to even finish room 104, so for the next few days that is exactly what I did. I wanted to have a darker style furniture to have another light and dark effect, so with the couches and coffee tables, I gave it a try and I thought it looked quite nice. Since the bathroom had a pinkish hue for the flooring and nice grey tiles for the walls, I tried to find items that fit that room and I thought it worked quite well. Whilst nose deep in work, I heard a noise outside in the corridor 
and saw the chicken was challenging me to another game of dice. So I of course agreed to his duel and I of course took that fool's money. He left me $2,000 and I got back to work. On day 41, I fixed up all the errors that I had, added the last few necessities and slapped the egg sticker on the wall, then booked out the room for another $200 per day. This allowed me to finish the wedding rooms and it gave me a bonus of $40,000. Whoa. The wedding did not start until 8pm, so I stayed busy and cleaned up rooms 102 and 107, then made my way to the restaurant and checked in on how things were doing. As the elevator got to the lobby, the power went out, so I made a quick switch of the lever and powered the building once again. Whilst walking to the restaurant again, I managed to level up to Hotel Level 2, allowing me to unlock Tier 3 furniture, which looked amazing. I approached the elevator and saw that Floor 2 was now available for purchase, so I spent my money and travelled up to see what it was looking like. Whilst riding up, I got a notification from one of the band members saying that they wanted to stay over once again, so now we could prepare the new floor just for them. To start this new wave of renovation, I made my way to room 204 and slammed my hammer into every wall I saw. I began work on the room in hopes to get it done in quick time. This was a slightly unique room design as there were several components to it, but I tried to go different and use a mix of orange, red and yellow for the walls to give it a huge boost of light and colour. For this odd room Looks style, like I needed some bright furniture rooms. to make it pop, so I went with a lighter wood Several type as well as some already. light white for we'll the chairs. The couches were a little different as I wanted them to somewhat match the carpet, so I kept them a darker tone compared to the rest of the apartment. Yumiko notified me that we had some noisy guests, so I made my way downstairs and once again aggressively slammed my hand on the door until it swung open, revealing absolutely no one. Oh well, we carry on I guess. I went back to my project and began furnishing the bathroom. Similar to the rest of the apartment, I used lighter tones like white for the bathtub, then went with a middle tone for the wooden sink basin and tables. I heard a loud bang on the floor below, so I dropped everything to go check it out. I opened the door to room 104, and that darn chicken came running out after breaking yet another piece of furniture. I quickly replaced it and cleaned the room up, then carried on with my work. Whilst adding the last few bathroom decor and apartment features, a cowboy requested if he could bring his horse into the lobby, so I of course said yes. He let me know that he would need some hay bales and I ran to the elevator to do so. I got to the lobby and saw that it was looking a mess, so I got the vacuum out and began the cleaning process, then scrolled across my furniture list and placed down three hay bales for the little horse. This room was taking a little too long, so I rushed back to get the last few details in before the night was over. I added the last few mirrors and plants, then added my signature egg sticker, and on day 50, I finally managed to finish. I checked everything was looking good and cleaned the room, then booked it out for $400 a day. Whilst making my way out of the room toward the elevator, I saw the man who booked it out, Thank and you. he must have the I biggest set of triceps I have ever seen. Good job. On day 51, Yumiko let me know that a pipe had burst in one of the rooms, so I equipped myself with the necessary tools and turned the valve off before visiting the room and cleaning it up, which took a little longer than I had imagined. Day 52 hit and I was still cleaning up the mess in room 102, when I finally finished it. Now it was time to begin renovation of room 201. I entered the room and had a quick look around to see the layout, then got my hammer out and began breaking everything in sight. For this room, I wanted a darker theme compared to the last few. I decided on using shades of black for the walls with a nice dark wood panel for the feature wall. I tried to paint over the wooden panels to see if it would work well, and I thought it looked pretty good. I used a lighter graphite black paint for the overall wall colour then made the low border out of jet black paint to give it a nice two-tone look. I got a notification once again of a ghost haunting under the room, so I took the elevator down to floor one, cleaned it up and placed down another ghost trap. The ghost slowly made its way over the trap and I turned on the vacuum to capture it once and for all. 
Once saw safe and captured, I sold wow, the trap for $10,000 and got back Thanks. to work in room 201. To complement the walls, I went with a brighter wood striped floor and a pure white ceiling, as standard, then tried to match the tables to the floor colour and the chairs and couches to the walls. I got another distraction from Yumiko as she said that more guests were being too noisy, so I took my break and dropped my tools, took the elevator down and knocked heavily on room 102 to see no one once again. I walked in and saw the mess it was left in, so I quickly cleaned it up and left. Before the day was over, I started placing down a few decorations to make the place look 10 times better. I tried to match the decorations to the style of the room which I thought I did quite well. And once the last few items were in place, including a TV and plants, I managed to eventually finish the room. Whilst looking through the before and after pictures, I thought that this might be the nicest room I had made so far, or at least it was to me. I booked out the room and managed to get another $360 per day. Crazy good. Now was time to finally finish the floor and begin work on the composer's room. I looked around the apartment once again to see the layout and began demolition work straight away. Within the next set of days, we grinded day and night to get this room finished. For this aesthetic, I wanted more of a minimalistic oh, style with black and white colours similar to the last room. The I went with a black border, but this time with an off-white topper, which to me looked amazing. During the work, I somehow came across a lost acoustic guitar that was just sitting in the room, so I picked it up and that's when I saw my dream notification. A wildlife enthusiast was in town and wanted a room in our establishment, and me being an animal lover, gladly agreed to his requirements and got on the job ASAP. His iguana got loose in one of the rooms, so I looked around, got hold of the little guy and brought him back to where he belonged. The man wanted a lot of shelves for his pet friends to climb, so I grabbed the heck shelves from my inventory and added 10 of them to the room. I needed to collect two more instruments for the band members, so I went sneak mode and looked around the apartments to eventually find an electric guitar and a microphone, then got back to work on the main project. I added a darker wood stripe flooring as I thought it would look quite neat, then matched any furniture I could to its colour. I heard the chicken outside the door once again, so I knew the challenge was on. I threw the dice he had and landed on a low number. I had unfortunately lost this duel, so no money for me. After our defeat, we carried on working and I had to figure out what room would be what and separated them all into a bedroom, bathroom, living room and central room where they're going to eat. Once these rooms had been established, furnishing the apartment became a lot easier. During the last phase of the room renovation, another man decided to lose his wallet in the lobby, so again I made my way down and scouted the area for anything out of the ordinary. We eventually found it after spending too much time and gave it back for that $300 reward, then got straight back to work in hopes of finishing very soon. The last few details were being placed down until the day unfortunately rolled over, with only a few things left. So sad. On day 68 I put in the electronics needed, as well as the plants and of course the egg sticker then booked out this lavish room for another $1,000 a day. Whoa. Now that the second floor had been complete, we could now level up the hotel, unlocking the next set of high-end furniture, some of which I was really excited to get to see. The day was coming to an end so quickly that I went to floor one and cleaned up any rooms that I could before the day was over. I had new items available for purchase, so on day 69 I made my way downstairs and purchased a Roomba. You put these little things down and they automatically clean an area of space, so big rooms like the ones on floor 2 would need a couple of these boys to get the job done. I went to the elevator and saw that floor 3 was finally buyable, so without a doubt in my mind I spent some quick bucks and made my way up to the new floor. This was the luxury floor, holding a changing room, a sauna, a balcony pool and the penthouse. This is going to be fun to fix up. But before we start any of this, we need to make the floor 2 corridor look nice enough to walk through. So for the rest of the day, I began tearing down the walls and getting rid of the trash that people have to walk through. I feel so sorry for these guests. I cleaned up all the debris in the corridor on day 70. 
and realized that I didn't need to do this job as I had robotic friends to do the work for me. I placed one down and stared at him for a while. He didn't move. So I did the only right thing and placed down another five. And that's when they all began to move as one. And I didn't know how to get rid of them. So I kind of just left them and visited every room to put another one inside, hoping they keep the place clean. There was still a lot of cleaning to be done in the corridor, as the robots were lacking very hard. So on day 71, I kept the cleaning up until the chicken caused mayhem once again and broke a piece of furniture in room 106. I had to stop what I was doing and replace the broken furniture before cleaning it up. I checked the booking app once again and saw that room 101 was slowly getting dirtier and dirtier, so I made the quick trip across the corridor and got that cleanliness level back to 10. Day 72 started and I carried on the cleaning run by visiting each room on floor 1 and checking which rooms needed a clean. The only other room that needed one was room 103, so I equipped the vacuum and got to work, cleaning it up before leaving and taking the elevator back to floor 2. I figured out how to pick up the Roombas, so I got rid of the corridor workers and carried on work in the corridor. Since I am a UK fellow, I tried to think about what hotels looked like here, and decided on making the corridor a mix of wood and black for wall panels with a nice grey carpet. Another ghost came to haunt one of the rooms, so I equipped my ghost hunting items and started making my way to room 104. Being the great ghost hunter that I am, I placed down the ghost trap in the wrong spot, and when trying to vacuum the ghost, it burst back out and exploded the floor. Two times. Third time's a charm, and I managed to finally capture it, which was then sold wow, for another $10,000, and Thanks. I spent some time fixing the floors and making it look presentable once again. Whilst I was on the first floor, I visited each room and put a Roomba in each of the places to maintain cleanliness. We kept up the Roomba placing within the early hours of day 74 and finally secured cleanliness in each of the rooms on that floor. I then made my way back up to floor 2 and continued work on making the corridor looking nice. I added some shelving that matched the wall panel colours, then some accessories on the coffee tables to give the area some extra colour until it was all eventually finished. Another man had butterfingers in the lobby as he requested we find his wallet once again. So I made our way down and searched for hours until the shining wallet was in my grasp, and I returned it, granting me another $300. At the start of day 76, I made a quick trip to the lobby to check if a new tool was available for us to buy. And there definitely was. We had now unlocked Dynamite, a very fun but extremely dangerous tool, especially in the hands of me. I went to the top floor and tried it out within the changing rooms, and with a large bang and bright flash, I checked the room and every piece of trash and walling was destroyed. This is perfect. Now, since it was already starting, I carried on renovations for the changing room, throwing a lot more dynamite and clearing the sauna while I was there. I tried to think of what standard high-end pool designs looked like and went with a nice checkered tile flooring with a natural looking stone wall, which I believe looked wonderful together. The chicken had different plans for me clearly, as once again he challenged me to a game of dice. So I took the challenge, and unfortunately it ended in a draw, so again no money for me. My violent tendencies grew stronger, so on day 79 I took my dynamite in hand and threw it into the pool area, clearing all of the debris possible and making it ready for renovation. Before we started with the luxury of the pool however, we had to make quick work of the hallway of floor 3, so straight away we began construction. I matched the flooring to the one in the changing rooms, as I thought it looked really nice, and made the walls into a dark spruce like panel. I tried to get the furniture to be slightly lighter stain of wood, and then whilst working hard I got a notification about a writer who wanted to book out one of the rooms. I agreed to him staying with us and he requested a desk, so I made my way to his room and put in the nicest desk he's ever seen. I then left him and went back upstairs to put in the last couple of plants and decorative pieces before it was finally finished. Now, with only a small amount of days left and a lot more work to do, we couldn't spend any time messing around, so we had to get started on the next project right away. 
Our next project was finally the terrace pool. I spent the rest of day 81 taking my vacuum around the pool area and giving it a quick clean before we began. Day 82 was spent purely focusing on the terrace pool as I wanted it looking real nice. For the flooring, I decided to go with nice large white tiles. Then I added black wicker furniture like beach chairs and crescent moon seating, all accompanied by white pillows. I scattered books, drinks and candles around the perimeter and of course my beloved plants until it was finally ready. The time had finally come on day 83 and we upgraded this the pool, pool slowly watching it fill up it with water. Hopefully not rain water though. While it filled up to the brim, I checked the sauna and was finally able to purchase the repairs for that as well, which is exactly what I did. I went back to the pool and saw a shiny item floating in the water, so I got closer and saw it was a ring. I picked it up and a cutscene began, showing exactly how the ring got there. And honestly, it was quite sad. The cutscene ended and I still had the ring in my hand for an extremely long time. Until finally it left and we leveled up the hotel to 4 stars, giving us access to new and Whoa, more expensive furniture and decorations. Looks like you'll have Perfect a lot of timing, work in here. as now it was time to begin work on the penthouse, which began with several counts of dynamite in each room. In the span of 9 days, heavy work was done on getting this big room done. For this room, the guest requested rich style furniture only grade 4 or higher, so he clearly had high standards that we couldn't let down. So I checked the walls and floor types, then decided on making a nice darkish wood theme, mixed with light grey for the main rooms, then created a darker toned bathroom with the use of tiles and darker wood stained furniture. The floors were made a mix and match of lighter and darker grey wooden strips, whilst the walls were made a light and dark brown colour with the use of wallpaper panels that resemble wooden borders. The bathroom, which in my opinion turned out the best, was made by using mix and match black and grey tile bricks for the walls and a nice marble flooring, while the furniture inside was made to be as similar as possible to the grey on the walls. We had an artist come into the hotel requesting a room, with what he said was a small furniture change. I willingly agreed to his request and made my way to room 106, where I then realised what he actually wanted. This man wanted 10 pieces of blue furniture. Why? It made no sense to me. So I got rid of the furniture that was already there and made everything blue, then left the crime scene and got back to work. I went around the penthouse, putting down decorations and plants, whilst putting up paintings and mirrors on the walls making sure it looked full, but not overpacked. Yumiko let me know that another pipe had burst in one of the rooms, so I made my way to the lobby, turned off the water valve, and quickly went back up to clean it up. When I got to the penthouse again, it was getting darker and darker, so I spent the next few hours lighting up the place to make it bright and viewable. Day 93 was spent finishing up the penthouse, placing more plants, paintings, and mirrors then fixed up the terrace outside with a new tile flooring. It was finally time. I had one more quick look around, making sure everything was perfect before bucking it out for a hefty $10,000 a day. That's insane. Just to add extra customer service, I went back inside and placed a few more Roombas down to keep the room clean while I was gone. I had one room left to finish, with very minimal days left, but I refused to fail. I made my way to room 203 and began work straight away, starting with dynamite all over the apartment. Once everything was cleared, I took out my vacuum and cleaned every inch of the place before beginning renovation. This room was for a special person, so I tried to make it look as nice as possible, starting off with a bright birch type wood stain for the flooring strips, as well as a dark red tinted brick wall pattern. The bathroom needed a fancy and luxurious look, so I went with a nice white marble tile wall, adding a small black marble feature wall for the shower to press against, then a dark grey large tile flooring to be a middle ground for the light and dark aesthetic. Another pipe had burst according to Yumiko, 
so I reluctantly hustled over to the lobby and turned off the valve before heading to room 204 and cleaned it up. I quickly made my way back to room 203, which was luckily just across the hall, and got back to work immediately. I tried to make the furniture in the main rooms to be a similar colour to the brick, and I believe I got a close resemblance, which is perfect. We had another interruption as a surfer decided he wanted to stay with us, and I had to agree. So very quickly, I went down the elevator to room 107 and gave the man a surfboard, then made my way back upstairs and once again got back to work, in hopes of getting no more distractions. But as I placed down the next shelving unit, the day rolled over and we were running out of time. We slapped in some more decorative details in a hurry, and just as we were close to finishing it all, yet another artist came in and wanted even more blue furniture. I was extremely tempted to turn him down, but now with the room this close to being done, my stresses had left and I gave him a chance. I placed down the several pieces of blue furniture he wanted and booked it out for a whopping $1,100 per day. Why? I don't know. Anyways, I went back upstairs and looked around the room to make sure it was all okay, putting down items to make it look less empty and fancier wherever I could, until night came along quickly and the day rolled over once again. The stress was slowly building back up, as we now only had two days left, but we kept the work going strong. On day 99, we placed the last few items into the apartment, which included anything to make the shelves look fuller, the desk look better, and the final touches, making the place brighter with lights and paintings to add a pop of colour. Once everything was looking a tier, I added my signature egg sticker and booked out our final room for $2,000 per day. We had finally done it. For our last day in the series, we had a little party to set up, so I made our way to the terrace and added party accessories, including goblets, some candles, some soda bottles, which definitely were not champagne, and some party balloons. I ran around the terrace, manically placing down everything I needed to, then waited by my chair for the party to start. The screen went black and the party finally began. The band from prior started singing their songs, the people started dancing along, and best of all, Roy and Eliza were reunited once again on top of their old hotel. So cute. As fireworks went off, we got a notification telling us that we'd finally reached hotel level 5. Perfect timing. So there we have it, 100 days of hotel renovator. I'm not going to lie, this may have been one of my favourite games to play so far, as I really enjoy the whole idea of renovating houses and buildings in real life. If you at all enjoyed this video, then please consider liking and subscribing, as these 100 days videos do take a while for me to create, and you all interacting really does help me in so many ways. But apart from that, stay hydrated, stay creative, and I'll see you all in the next one. My name is Newbie, and have a great day.